Hi, this is uh, Justin Pineda, and for today, we're going to discuss Module 5 of the um, InfoSec course, and the topic is about physical security. So, why is physical security important, especially um, because most of the uh, topics in uh, information security are focused on uh, the technical aspect which could be pertaining to um, software hardware <clears throat> um, but apart from this apart from the technical aspects uh, physical security is important because yeah so no matter how good your network or application security tools are the data are still at risk if there is there are no good physical controls available uh, so that's the that's the key takeaway because um, as you would have noticed majority of the discussion in information security um, focuses on the technical aspects such as the hardware the software and so on but you need to be able to understand also how physical security works because it goes hand in hand and it says that physical security is the oldest um, form of security because it's the first layer of defense the gates the locks etc and although um, although you are not going to be directly um, be involved with the implementation of physical security it's important to know the overlaps and how, for example, in the server room, what type of um, what types of physical security controls are you going to put in place? It's not just the normal doorknob and so on. Okay, <clears throat> this is an example of uh, physical security. We similar to what we discussed in um, module one. Uh, there are different types of controls like preventive, detective, um, um, controls, and uh, there, there's also deterrent and others. Okay, uh, and it applies to different types of uh, security domains. Like for example, here in um, in this example, okay, so there's a um, uh, there's somebody uh, stealing um, or getting in without permission for in, in, in a house and um, the incident was caught in um, was caught in a CCTV okay however the the culprit was not um, caught uh, <clears throat> so go going back to the uh, formula of protection which is prevention plus detection plus response so if you would see there's a preventive control uh, such as a gate and then there's a cctv uh, which is a detective control but there is no response so the 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 thief um, was able to um, steal and go away okay and another one so um, we see a lot of this um, um prior to um, COVID-19 because in edge is very traffic and you would see uh, in 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 Guadalupe area because that's where the um where the the heavy traffic um or the, the, the bottleneck of heavy traffic is found because of the passes and the passengers go in um, into the mass transport etc you would see um, kids like this who would try to open the uh, the car and they will have a good chance to steal because um, it stands still traffic and they will be able to open it if it's unlocked and then get get your stuff and then run to the train station uh, to the railway sorry and then go up and then go to the other side 
and you won't, they won't be able to be caught because they have a lot of accomplices they, they will be able to give the package to another person and another person etc so this is another example of um, detective control you'll be able to see this and then in the evening news but um, there and <laughs> and it's up uploaded in in social media social media sites and so the response aspect is lacking and now we go to the types of threats um on a normal textbook it will tell you three types natural threats um man-made threats and environmental threats um, but it, it varies depending on the textbook that you're going that you are using so for this resource um, because we're following some of the contents um, are based on the CISSP review uh, guide so um, these are the types so there are natural threats like floods earthquakes and then we have supply system threats, which is uh, which can be electric uh, electricity outage, water outage, man-made threats, which can be fraud, theft, or sometimes or most of the time, um, insider threats like uh, disgruntled employees and uh, similar similar types of. Um, uh, people um, and politically motivated threats like strike, riot, and others. Okay. <clears throat> so in this uh, in this reference, they dig deeper more on the um, man-made threats because there's also politically motivated. Threats. Okay, now. In physical security, this is always the question. In all these threats, what is the pri primary priority? So it's not the asset. Uh, I mean, it's not the IT asset. It's not the data. Okay. The primary priority is always the, the lives of the people. Okay. So <clears throat> yes, in information security, we have to secure um we have to secure the data we have to make sure that that, um, that the data is owned accessed by authorized persons and uh, should be available etc but um during a crisis during a disaster during a catastrophe okay, that the primary priority would be life safety okay, always okay, because for example um if you we, if we will discuss uh, business continuity planning, the, the data the data would be recovered in a disaster recovery site. So, so there's a backup, there's a mirror, but obviously uh, people's lives are not um, cannot be mirrored, right? You cannot. Um, you cannot make somebody dead alive again. <laughs> so that's why the primary priority is life safety. And that is the, the answer for all questions regardless of the type of certification exam that you will uh, you will take. So in the planning process, assuming so this the, in the, this is assuming that you are still looking for the venue of your um, of your office site okay. so you have to check okay, the following so crime and disruption prevention through deterrence meaning to say um, what are ways that you can put in place to discourage and scrupulous individual even to think of attempting to go into the 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 office side right so you put warnings uh, you, you put beware uh, cctv monitor ongoing 
Okay. Reduction of damage through the use of delaying mechanisms. So here in, in physical security, um, locks, because in some references they say locks are preventive controls because without the key you cannot open it and you cannot go to the other um, sections of the place. Okay. But in a more granular definition, it's called a delaying control, meaning um, it doesn't provide a lot of security, but it's considered as a puzzle by um, by some intruders because they have tools to, to unlock the, the, the padlock. Okay. <clears throat> Crime or disruption detection. Okay. How do you detect... Um, a crime uh, has occurred in the office space or disruption okay. incident assessment so how frequent are security incidents um, um, occur in the organization and what are the response procedures so you, you need to be able to plot this out and prepare to monitor this okay so and also um, it's also important to do performance-based approach because this is the only way that you can you can check whether the security physical security controls that are in place are effective. So you, you have to put number of successful crimes, number of successful disruptions, number of unsuccessful crimes, number of unsuc unsuccessful disruptions, all the way to financial loss of a successful. Uh, successful dis disruption so everything must be quantifiable in this type of um, approach okay, because this will help you justify whatever um, tools you want to procure okay when you defend it to management you can show the numbers to them and also it will also give you metrics to determine whether the the controls in place are effective okay. <clears throat> so um, th this is a, a sample procedure on how you you plan and then implement physical security controls okay, so you do your risk analysis determine acceptable risk level you do baselines of performance and implement uh, countermeasures so you can check so this actually um, um, uh, applicable to any type of security domain okay, but we put it in the physical security context like what are the implemented countermeasures such as construction materials security guards intrusion detection system fire, fire protection emergency training etc okay. <clears throat> and then you observe whether it is effective and whether the acceptable risk level changes from time to time so it depends <clears throat> uh, now uh, one of the um, one of the concepts one of the interesting concepts in physical uh, security is called the CPTED or the crime prevention to environmental design so here <clears throat> uh, there are different types such as natural access control, natural surveillance, and natural territorial reinforcement. Uh, now, in CPTED, um, it says that um, you apply uh, the natural arrangement of things uh, in the environment and in a way provide security without very obvious um, um, without very obvious uh, security controls in place okay so let's have an example so let, let's say uh, let's go to the first one natural access control okay, so we have guidance of people entering and leaving a space so in this concept um, so again we, we use um, aesthetics um, of the place but in a way provides security like in the first uh, picture here <clears throat> so this is a park but um, <clears throat> park in Makati 
So you will see that there is a walkway. Okay. So natural access control because there's a walkway and it's between grasses. People are in a way forced to 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 use the walkway instead of going to the grass. So um, natural access control, right? Uh, and in the second picture we have he, this is the Makati stock exchange in Ayala Triangle um, we see here these uh, concrete balls placed there so it's the we call it bollards um, so again natural access control so there's a it's pleasing to um, to people passing by uh, but at the same time it provides security because um, cars cannot cannot go beyond the, the bollards it's, it's very it's very heavy it will damage the car but it, it looks very pleasing so that's natural access control if we, we design it in a way where it guides people entering and leaving a space then um without putting obvious security control so that's natural access control so <clears throat> in application so this should, this is how the the design of your office should look like so um, there's a public zone going in okay and then if you would notice the more um the more um, sensitive the data is okay the the the, the zone is mo in the more inner part of the the building okay so that's how the design of the building and ideally there should be one a public uh, entrance and exit although there should be a fire exit Obviously, but there should be the best practice should be one um, one entrance and one exit so you can monitor the people going in okay? and nobody can sneak you know uh, sneak in a different um, entrance way and then we also have natural surveillance the use of place and placement of physical environmental features personnel walkways and activity areas in ways that maximize visibility so again um, lighting okay features walkways that are visible so for example in this building um, so again aesthetics it looks good because it, it uses glass okay. but it's also good because everybody outside can see um, all the people in the building so in a way there is natural natural surveillance because they can see and then it will provide deterrence to anybody who would try to do something unscrupulous right because they will see that there are a lot of witnesses if ever they would do a crime and then um, yeah, so this is an example, and this is actually a modern design. A lot of um, new newer buildings uh, are designed like this. And another one is this. This is a, the elevator from SM Mega Mall. So the elevator is uh, using glass also, so you can see uh, the people in the elevator from far away. So you will be able to see what is happening and that provides natural surveillance. Okay, so that's the second one. And the third one is the natural territorial reinforcement. So it creates a physical um, design um, that emphasizes or extends the company's physical sphere of influence so legitimate users feel a sense of ownership of that place. So um, how do we do that? So we have um like for example we know that um 
you have a brand or um, a common a common movement, a common fashion, a common um, common slang, right? Uh, that you can use um, to 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 check whether the person is part of the organization or not. So in some cases, some organizations are very formal. Even their attire is formal. They wear their IDs. So if you see somebody who's not wearing an ID, then you might flag him or her. Okay. <clears throat> and yeah, so there, there are different ways. Or you can ask for the department or um, other other relevant questions. So that's the natural territorial reinforcement. So these three are part of what we call CP3. So issues with selecting a facility size, so visibility, okay. Um, are you okay with the types of neighbors, population of the area, surrounding terrain, okay. surrounding area and external entities? This is very important for, for some like crime rate, riots, terrorism attacks, okay. proximity to of, uh, police, medical and fire stations, and possible hazards from surrounding area. So it's something it, that's why um, for um, for um, some countries they have what we call economic zones, wherein the, the zone is meant for office spaces, right? and then accessibility, road access, traffic, proximity to airports, train, and the highways, and then. Um, natural disaster, so the likelihood of floods, tornadoes, earthquakes, hazardous terrain. Okay. So there are a lot of considerations. And then for the types of materials, there are three types. So we have light frame construction material, okay, which is light timber. Second would be the heavy timber construction material, which is the thick wood. And then fire resistant material, which is a steel with con concrete, or what we call a rebar. So we, um, so we usually put um, the thick bar in the outermost part of the um, the office, and then the light bar in the inner. So what are the usual entry points? We have um, the door. So th there are different types. We can use vault doors, personal doors, industrial doors, vehicle access doors, and bull bullet resistant doors. So I, I will not be um, explaining in detail the types, but I'm, I'll just enumerate this okay, just for the for the sake of discussion. Okay. So as a best practice, a door should be made up of wood, metal, or concrete. So, again, because uh, this is debatable, but if you're going to to, um, to answer in the context of life safety, obviously the answer would be wood. Because if there's a fire um, and you use metal, then it will be a problem because it will be very hot and it might expand. Um, concrete is very hard, very heavy. While wood, you can um, you can kick it. You can use tools to to destroy it. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then for the entry points for the windows, okay. So um, we have standard tempered acrylic wired, laminated solar window film and security film. Um, now aside from the aside from the type of doors and windows, one of the things that you have to put in consideration when um, implementing physical security are the hinges, uh, because the the strength of the strength of the the windows and the doors are dependent also on the hinges that you you will be using. So you have to invest on the hinges as well. Okay. So, <clears throat> computer and equipment, 
rooms, what uh, is the best practice? So it can be accessed remotely and only housed by a few people. And usually data centers are like this. Right. Um, another issue would, in physical security would be this, the ceiling panels okay, and the partitions. Because if you, uh, usually if you lease an office space, you, you only use um, partitions and uh, um, you'll be using ceiling panels. But uh, the best practice would be to extend partition up to the true ceiling for um, for rooms handling sensitive um, data like server rooms. Right? <clears throat> and this is an example of the um, controls or the security controls that are put in place in the data centers from the bridge alarms to um, motion sensors all the way to the on-premise security officer. So there are so many um, controls that you have to put in place. So what are the major problems in the data centers of mold, smell, dew, and uh, water? Okay. So the, the, the important control that you have to put in place there is what we call an HVAC um, or um, yeah it's the HVAC um, an HVAC system so let's now go to protecting assets how do you secure your laptop okay. and um, what is your stand in your in BYOD so in, in some organizations, they are very strict. They put um, they put passwords even the BIOS before before you're able to to go to the operating system, and um, the laptops are encrypted um, using an encryption software. Um, so if ever it gets stolen, they won't be able to get uh, the data in the computer and there's so much more some organizations don't allow the use of usbs they don't allow the use of laptop for personal uh, purposes and um, a lot more okay um in the past there is really a big debate on the byod uh, policy okay, because well it will mix up a lot of things personal and um, um, company uh, data and it's very hard to protect these types of information uh, but because of the pandemic a lot of organizations relax the the policy on the BYOD although security implementation on the BYOD will be discussed in, a, in another session how do you secure your laptop? Get a serial number, set the BIOS password, you encrypt the drive, okay, you put a company sticker or identifiable information, and then set up remote wipeout. Okay, so this is the best practice. Again, it, it will depend on the type of organization that you belong to. Okay. And regarding BYOD, so a lot of companies are still skeptical about it. Okay. In my experience, in one of my previous companies, they they use security profiles that are installed in BYOD uh, devices. So if, the, in, in a way, there's some control okay, when you use your BYOD to connect to the network of the, the organization. Okay, and then there, there are some policies that are installed in your device. And then types of safes, we have so in some organizations, they're still using SAFE, okay, not just banks, but some organizations that try to hide uh, important documents. Okay, so we have wall safe, floor safe, chest, depositories, and vaults. Now some important features, so we have passive relocking function, so it can detect. So uh, these are just concepts. Uh, um, so it can detect when someone attempts to tamper with it, in which case extra internal bolts will fall into place to ensure 
it cannot be compromised. And then thermal relaxing function. So when a certain temperature is met, possibly from drilling, an extra lock is implemented to ensure the valuables are properly protected. So for electric power, um, the two common issues um, are the EMI and the RFI, so the electromagnetic interface and radio frequency interface. So some of the terms, we have power excess. So when we say spike, it's a momentary high voltage. When we say surge, it's a prolonged high voltage. When we say power loss, it can be fault or blackout. So when we say fault, it's a momentary um, power outage. And then blackout is a prolonged complete loss of electric power. When we talk about power degradation, we have sag or dip, which means there's a momentary low voltage condition from one cycle to a few seconds. Brown out, which is a prolonged power supply that is below normal voltage. And inrush current, which is initial surge of current required to start a low. So this, um, these are very important um, electric power terms that you have to uh, be, be familiarized with because you know, in um, in common terms, when you use it in daily conversations, um, some of the terms are used interchangeably, like brownout, when we're talking about blackout, okay, or yeah, okay, or spike or surge. So, <clears throat> in case of a fire or flood, in what the direction should the pressure go? So the answer is positive drains. So, this is the um, application for most of the um, most of the physical security controls. So, so that the contents should flow out instead of in. So, positive drains. Okay. Ensure that it will go out. So that people will not suffocate. Okay, it will help the people in to go out. Okay. So again, we we discussed um, environmental issues uh, a while ago. Um, so the implementation of HVAC. Okay. So. Why? So if there's high humidity, it can cause cause um, corrosion, and if there's low humidity, it can cause excessive static electricity. Uh, now, similar to positive drains, when we talk about ventilation, so there's what we call positive uh, pressurization. So when an employee opens a door, the air goes out, and outside air does not come. So similar to the concept of positive drains. Now let's go to fire prevention, detection, and suppression. So, so when we say fire prevention, what does that mean? So usually it talks about awareness, training, that you should not use matches <laughs> or you should not... Um, um, you should not overheat the computer. You should use um, power servers in a cold um, place, and so on. And then, yeah, so that covers fire prevention. Okay, but obviously, at some point, there are some things that you cannot prevent. Okay, so, for instance, there's a, a fire that broke. Um, then you need to be able to detect the fire. So it can be manual or automatic. You can use smoke activated or heat, heat activated. Although when we say um, references say that smoke activated um, fire detection systems are more prone to false positives. And then fire suppression, when you use a off suppression agent to stop the fire. So, 
we have fire extinguisher classes so there are different types of fire classes so when we say um class a it talks about common com combustibles like wood products paper and laminates okay and then suppression method is water or foam for b the type of fire is liquid and it's um, petroleum products and coolants. Suppression method is gas, carbon dioxide, foam dye powders. When it's class C, it's electrical. So elements of fire include electrical equipment and wires. Suppression method is gas, car carbon dioxide, and dry powder. And when it's these combustible metals, so mag magnesium, sodium, potassium, the suppression method is dry powder. So in usually in the certification exam, you will be asked what type of um, fire extinguisher class um, would you be using in in a science lab or in a printing press. So you need to be able to uh, to answer based on the type of fire it can suppress. Okay, so for combustion elements and suppression methods, so in this table it only shows that um, the elements of fire such as uh, fuel, oxygen, and heat. Okay, so these are the three elements of fire um, that we only need to um, remove one of the elements to to remove fire. So, for example, if the combustion element is fuel, so the suppression agent will be soda acid because it removes the fuel. Okay, so, um, so these are the types, and then these are the suppression methods that you can uh, you can use. Now, let's go to water sprinklers. So there are different types. So we have wet pipe, dry pipe reaction and deluge so when we say wet, wet pipe so it always contain um, contains water in the pipes and are usually discharged by temperature controls um, sensors so when we say dry pipe so the water is contained in a holding tank until it is released when we say pre-action, so it's similar to dry pipe systems in that the water is not held in the pipes but is released when the pressurized air within the pipes is reduced. And deluge, it's, uh, it has its sprinkler heads wide open to a, large, a larger number of water to be released in a shorter period. So okay, it will depend on um, your organization where uh, you're going to put water sprinklers because Water sprinklers um, cannot be or are not advisable to be installed in data center, right? Because it will destroy the servers and the computers. But we can put it in a in, in an office, in a regular office setting. Then you can use wet pipe or dry pipe. Usually, um, dry pipe is used in um, a cold place, cold locations where freezes okay so um, organizations use dry pipe because if they use wet pipe then it will it might freeze the water in the pipes and then we have different types of lock so we have mechanical lock and under mechanical locks there are different types like wired what sorry wired lock which is the basic pad lock, like the tumbler lock, and the combination locks. Okay, under electronic combination lock, there's also what we call a cipher lock, okay, where it has more features like door delay, key override, master keying, and um, hostage alarm. Now, um, we, go, we go now to fencing. So this actually debatable in a way because um, the, the, the 
the height of the fence may be subjective but um, based on a lot of references especially if you're going to take your CISSP exam um, this would be the definition so if you use fences that are three to four feet high will deter casual trespassers if you use six to seven feet it's considered too high when it's eight feet high with strands of barb or razor wire at the top it means you're serious about protecting your property okay so they they often deter the more determined intruder at the same time you may give be giving a signal that there is something interesting in the in the location because you're using very high fences okay. so for surveillance devices we have closed circuit tv cctv systems so there are uh, types of cctv systems such as fixed focal length and the zoom and we have also have other security controls such as man trap where in there's a door after the door so if it catches somebody who piggybacks okay. lighting okay. so lighting is also security control under deterrent controls because um, it helps people to pass through um, roads or streets uh, or passageways and discouraging unscrupulous people from doing something nasty <laughs> We have bollards, which I, I, I've shown you in a, in one of the slides. Security patrols, dogs, alarms, annunciator system, motion sensor system, and proximity detector. So in in um, in summary, there are so many physical security controls that you can implement. Okay, starting from you know uh, from planning. Uh, choosing the type of or choosing the type of office, the location of the office, and then um, designing using CPTED, and then choosing the type of doors and windows, and other features. So this is a um, a quick pass on on. Uh, the physical security domain so that wraps up the module for today uh, thank you for listening for any questions you can um, send me an email or comment in the comment section right, thank you <clears throat>